A lot of people don't even think about how things are made in their life. They look at something and think, okay, cool, you know, I'll just use that object. But then they don't think, you know, that took a lot of time to make that. <laughs> that took, you know, hundreds of years of development and, you know, make that and work on that and design the machines to build that and the people involved in that. You walk around with change in your pocket, do you know how many factories and people it took to design that coin? <laughs> you know, thousands of people and machines and entire warehouses and factory to make a penny. That's one thing people don't think about, is how much goes into everything and how much we take for granted what we've got. Uh, I'm Brendan Crotty, I'm 16 years old, and I do blacksmithing and metalworking. My ideal day of just enjoyment and relaxing would be going out and building something. Take some crazy, say, okay, that looks like a crazy idea, and you just go out and build it. I don't know. That would be fun for me. It's just piddling, taking something apart, fixing something, building something. There's always something new coming out. There's always something new being discovered, something new being worked on. So right now I'm making the mounting bracket out of plastic and this is UHMW Ultra High Molecular Weight Polyethylene. And the actual, actually the entire electronics enclosure I'm building is plastic. The sub panel's plastic, the enclosure's plastic, and the mounting brackets are plastic. So everything in it is completely electrically isolated. Uh, I have a large shop at home that's mainly all of my other tools. So I've got welding equipment and then actually a small machine shop at home. So that I can go out in the summer, the winter or whatever and work on projects late at night or, or whatever I need to do. And that's where I rebuild a lot of my equipment too. Um, I went to a reenactment. It was actually at the Honey Springs Battlefield one weekend just to kind of, you know, have fun. And there was actually a couple of blacksmiths there. And I ended up talking to him for about three hours, just sitting and watching and watching and watching. And my parents were, you know, let's go, let's go. And so I just, you know, I just decided I wanted to do that. It looked like so much fun. Just took off from there. I got tools and got my own shop and went to every single meeting. I was doing blacksmithing every single week. Well, since I'm homeschooled, I pretty much, I spend all my free time doing metalworking. So about twice a year, I do historical reenactments here at the Hunter's Home in Park Hill, Oklahoma. And of course, I'll bring all of my tools and equipment. I have actually a small tent to kind of protect me from the sun. And then I'll just sit and demonstrate for two to three days. And usually I'll do repair items when I'm here because that's what the blacksmith would have done at least on this site. It's like being a blacksmith in, in the Civil War era for a couple of days. You can't avoid the heat, no matter where you go. You stand on any side of the forge and then the wind changes direction. It's, you can't get away with it. I mean, there, whenever you've got the fire big, especially when you're really trying to get something hot, it just radiates and radiates. And even if you're two feet away leaning out here, you're still just feels like you're standing next to a bonfire. You're looking at about 2,400 degrees. 2,400 is on the higher end of things. And then of course, forge welding, you're looking at like 26 to 2,800, so. It, the fire itself is very hot, and then all of the fire around it could be 200 degrees easily. As far as period authentic tools, it varies. I like to try to get as close as I can as possible while still having functional tools. The for forge I've got is about from 1890-ish, and that's, as mechanical forges go, that's about as far as you can get. The reaction is usually, how old are you? <laughs> That's the first question they ask. And then beyond that, it's just, they just sit and watch and ask tons of questions. You know, what are you doing? What would the blacksmith have made? You know, what all do you make here? I just, I mean, usually I'll get hundreds of questions, hundreds and hundreds. And it's, it's really interesting to see the kind of questions you get. I, I'm aware that I'm a little unusual. I've had a lot of people say, um, okay. That's about their response when I say something, so. I, it is odd. I, I mean, most people, when I tell them I'm 16 and doing blacksmithing and building furnaces in the garage and doing machining and stuff, they usually don't say much, honestly. And to me, that's just normal. I just go out and build things. It is very physically tiresome. Usually whenever I do the reenactments, after three days, you can't even feel your arms. I mean, usually you get lot, it's very tiring and you get lots of blisters and lots of burns. I do science fair. That's one of the really main things in my life. This is a small single piston compressed air powered engine I built completely from scratch. I designed and basically kind of just built it as I went as far as making every part fit together, but built the base from scratch, the end itself, the entire control panel, electronics, 
everything. I got from manufacturing things to then designing and building things. So I started out building small furnaces, like forges, which you would use in blacksmithing, but gas, gas fueled. So actually all of my science fair projects are actually based on large furnaces, industrial burner systems. Yeah, I've, I've done fairly well in science fair. I've won the entire regional competition two years in a row now. And then before that I won like the junior level. And then I actually went to a national competition in Washington DC and placed first in engineering. I mean, honestly, I don't I don't look at things the way if I want to use that. I look at it and think, I want to build that. <laughs> I want to build something better. And, and I don't really play video games or anything like that. I, I spend all of my time on the garage building stuff, just trying to learn new things, learn new techniques, and learn and learn and learn, because you, that's really how everything happens. Because I, I want to be the person who, you know, designs things that have never been thought of before, taking something and making it 10 times better than it ever was.